Hey everyone! Um, so I'm going to go over the activity 25 and 26 review for your guys' quiz. So let's have some fun! Alrighty, number one, it says state the transformations of each group, then graph and state the domain and range of each uh, function. Oh my gosh, state the transformations of each graph. Sorry guys. Okay, <laughs> so the transformations this 4 is under the radical, so it's going to move left or right, and because it's a plus, it's going to move to the left. And this plus 3 on the outside of the radical means up 3. And this is a square root function because, remember, there's just a known 2 to be there. Okay, So, I need to get myself a calculator. And I'm going to go my y equals screen. I'm going to hit second x squared, x plus 4, and then I'm going to make sure I'm outside of the square root to do the plus 3. Let's see what that graph looks like. And as you guys can see, hold on, I'm going to get this to be a 10 by 10 graph. My graph looks like it moved left 3 and up 4, because remember it normally starts right here, right? So, um, let's plot some of those points. Okay, I'm going to start here. Negative 4, 3. negative 3, 4, 0, 5, and that looks like a pretty good picture. So to double check, make sure your picture looks like the one in the graph. Okay, my graph does not go to the left, so that's where it starts. All right, so the domain, remember those are your x values. You're going to read them from left to right. So my most left x value is negative 4. And my most uh, right x value goes towards positive infinity. Now, remember we have to think about parentheses and brackets. I'm going to use a parenthesis on the infinity sign, because that's what we always do. And then I'm going to use a, a bracket on the negative 4, because this coordinate point is included, and it's a solid dot. Now for the range, remember that's y values from the bottom to the top. My lowest y value is 3. And my highest y value goes up towards infinity. We always use parentheses on infinity symbols, and then 3 has a bracket because the point is included. And that's it. Alrighty, number 2. Transformations here. This is a cube root function because of this 3. Okay, this minus sign out in front means reflection over the x-axis. Make sure you guys state that. It's a reflection over the x-axis. This would be right 2, and this is down 6. It's outside of the radical. So let's type this in. Whoopsies. Okay, so negative, I'm going to use the little negative symbol. Whoops, sorry. Down here on the calculator, that's the negative sign. So negative math 4 x minus 2, make sure you're outside of the cube root now, minus 6. So, remember the parent function looks like this. So, yeah, it looks like the this center part moved to the right 2 and down 6, and it is reflected, because this is normally down like this, and it goes up, so that up part goes down. So that's a way to check yourself if you're unsure you typed it in correctly. So let's plot some of these points. It looks like I got negative 6, negative 4. Um, 1, negative 5 is a point. 2, negative 6. 3, negative 7. Hmm. 10, negative 8. Can I fit that? Oh, yay. All right, sometimes you guys might have to plot some decimals, and that's totally fine, okay? So here we go. Let me connect my dots. Remember, it curves, and it has arrows on both ends, so make sure it looks like that, okay? All righty, now for the domain of this graph. My most left x value has an arrow, so I'm pointing towards negative infinity, and the right side of the graph points towards positive infinity. These will both be parentheses, because that's what I use on infinity symbols. 
And then the range, my lowest y value goes to negative infinity, and my highest y value goes up towards positive infinity. Let me use our parentheses. So, when do you use brackets versus parentheses for domain and range? Parentheses are for positive or negative infinity or any point that's not included of the function, right? We use brackets when the point is included. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Included. Um, when the point is included um, or it exists. Okay? Alrighty. That's just a little reminder for up here. And we're only using the brackets. You only have to really use them for the um, square root functions. The cube root functions, these are always, this is always the domain and range of the cube root. All right, on the back side, solve the following equations below. Be sure to check for extraneous solutions. This is a big key part of this. All right, here we go. So remember, the first step is to isolate the radical. Um, it looks like I have the radical by itself on one side of the equal sign. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to grab my highlighter. Okay, here's my radical. It's already by itself. And I have a radical over here by itself. If you want, if you don't like how that's written, this is x plus 4 equals, this is the cube root because it's 1 third, 3x minus 2. Okay, so you guys can see that you have radicals on both sides. So now when that happens, um, the next step is to cube both sides because we're dealing with a cube root and that cancels out your radical. So I get x plus 4 equals 3x minus 2, because the radical's gone. And then now combine your like terms. So minus x minus x. Um, I get 4 equals 2x minus 2. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides, plus 2. 6 equals 2x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so x equals 3. Now let me see if that actually works or not. we got to check for extraneous. Whoops. So I've got the cube root, whoops, math, 4, of 3 plus 4 is that. And then the cube root of 3 times 3 minus 2. And those equal the same number, so yay. All right, letter B. Um, here's my radical. It is not by itself. I have this minus 2 over here, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I get x plus 2 equals the square root of 7x plus 14. And then I want to get, well, now that I have the radical by itself, this is a square root, so I'm going to square both sides. And remember, when you square this, this means x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 7x plus 14 because that 2 cancels out that radical. Okay, then um, from here we need to foil this out so I get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4 equals 7x plus 14. That's when you guys do this thing, right? Take this value. Okay. So I get x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 7x plus 14. Um, I have a quadratic, so I need to set this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 7x minus 14. I get x squared. 4 minus 7 is negative 3x. 4 minus 14 is negative 10 equals 0. Now we can factor that. So what would that be? 5 and 2. Negative 5 plus 2, right? It gives you negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Yep, so then now we set these both equal to 0. And solve for x. So minus 2, x equals negative 2. And plus 5, x equals 5. So let's go check those. So 
I have negative 2 equals negative 2 plus the square root of 7 times negative 2 plus 14. That equals negative 2, and that x value right here would be negative 2, so those are the same. So that one for sure works. Let's try the 5. Um, let's see here. So I would need this side to equal 5 because that's what I'm plugging in. So negative 2 plus the square root of 7 times 5 plus 14 equals 5. Wow, they both work. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, um, letter D. Uh, let's see here. So here's my radical. Um, and notice that this 4 is being multiplied by the radical and it's kind of like attached to it right now. So I got to move everything else over first that's like not as attached to it, to the radical. So I'm going to add the 5 first. So I get 4 cube root of x minus 1 equals 8. And then now I still don't have the radical by itself. So here I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get rid of that. Four, or 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now I'm going to cube both sides because the radical is by itself. I've got to get the x out of it. 2 to the third is 8, not 6. That's not saying 2 times 3. 2 to the third. And then I'm going to add 1. So x is 9. Let's check it. 4 math 3, or what am I doing? 4 math number 4. Um, let's see, 9 minus 1 minus 5 equals 3. Awesome. All right, and then the last one, I don't know why I went out of order, but sorry about that. <laughs> um, so this looks like it's a square root. Here's my radical. This 3 is attached to it. i got to get rid of this 1, though, first. So minus 1 equals 6, right? Yep. Divide by 3 now. 2. Then I'm going to square both sides because the radical is by itself. Add 1. And then divide by 2. x equals 5 over 2. So 3 square root of 2 times 5 over 2 minus 1 plus 1. 7. Wow. Okay. So there were no extraneous solutions on here. All right. But there could be one on your quiz. Wink, wink. All right. What are the steps to finding the inverse algebraically? Remember, step one is to change f of x to y. Step two is to switch your x and y values. Or you could say, um, like, exchange the variables, um, whatever you need, okay? So I'm just going to write switch x and y values because that's what I have on your guys' notes. Whoops, or switch x and y, sorry. So at x, that means x becomes a y and y becomes x. You're not switching the whole term, just the variable. Alrighty, and then number three is to solve for y. And that's it, okay? Now remember, the inverse notation is f to the negative first of x. And because we're good mathematicians, let's use that notation, okay? All right, so number six, it says find the inverse of the following functions. So step one, f of x becomes y. Switch x and y. So that means this y becomes an x, and this x becomes a y. Now solve for y. So I'm going to add 5. x plus 5 equals 2y. Y is not by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I get 1 half x plus 5 over 2 equals y. But because we are good mathematicians, we're going to say the inverse of f of x is 1 half x plus 5 over 2. Okay? 
All right, letter B. So f of x becomes y. And then I switch my x and my y. Notice the y became an x and the x became a y. All right, here's my y value. I got to get it by itself, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And then to get y completely by itself, I got to square root it. Because anything that's squared, to get rid of it, you square root it. So you get the square root of x plus 6 equals y. Um, and remember, you get plus or minus out in front there because when you take the square root of something, you get plus or minus. So because we're good mathematicians, let's re rewrite it using inverse notation. Make sure you show that that 6 is inside the radical somehow. All right, letter C, last one um, of the this part. I'm sorry. <laughs> so f of x is y. And we're going to change y to x and x to y. And then we're going to solve for y. Well, it's under the radical, so I need to move this 3 over first, actually. And then I need to get rid of this cube root. So to do that, I'm going to cube both sides. I'm going to do the opposite. And that will get rid of the cube root. So I get x minus 3 to the third equals y minus 2. y still is not by itself. i got to add 2. So real quick here, don't be silly. Okay, You cannot do th negative 3 plus 2 because this is, un this is all inside this cube root. So he's just going to go at the end. So leave him alone. x minus 3 cubed plus 2 is what y equals. Okay, But like I said, we are good mathematicians. So we're going to use inverse notation. Alrighty. Okay. All right. Last couple questions here. What test do you use to determine if a relation is a function? So if I give you a graph or a set of data points, you can determine if uh, a relation is a function by using the vertical line test. And then how do you, oh, I need a, there's an error right here, so you might want to fix this on your paper. It says, <laughs> what test do you use to determine if a function's inverse is a function? So if I give you something like this, and I say, will this function's inverse be a function? You would use the horizontal line test. So no, that inverse would not be a function of this graph. All right, and then given the graph of a function, how would you graph its inverse? All you guys would have to do is switch the x and y coordinates. And don't forget, graphically too, that inverse functions are reflective, or you could say symmetric, with the line y equals x. If I can spell it, symmetric, sorry, with y equals x. So switch x and y coordinates or just make it symmetric with the line y equals x. Okay? All right, let us know if you guys have any questions and good luck on your quiz. See ya!